science, order, chaos. The discussions that we continually get in, the arguments that we can have, how everything breaks down and how everything sticks together. When you hear about any catastrophe hypothesis, catastrophe hypothesis, a catastrophe hypothesis is built on, on, on chaos, right? Everything breaks down. Is that what's happening? If you believe that everything falls to chaos, that entropy is the only thing governing anything, and there is, you know, like, everything breaks down, that's one universe that you choose to live in. And death is your God. Death is the strongest force in all universality. And death is your God. You can say that there is no God. But when you believe that chaos is the, is the only absolute, you have made death a deity. But if order governs the universe, if to everything there is a season, if everything that is visible and not visible to the human eye has an order, an arrangement, an organization, covalent, ionic, if everything has a symmetry, if there are coplanar levels, There is some thread of connection between what is alive and what is no longer presently, visibly living. If there is any kind of intermingling, Order is the deity. Now, is that heresy? It could be. There could be a problem with, with making order and nature and law itself God. That could be a problem. But only if that God is not personal. That order if it if there's no personality, if it is not personal, individual, uniquely arranged for a specific purpose, a solitary purpose, a unifying purpose. If you believe that in the beginning there was light, if you understand that sometime before the separation of all that is, there existed a time without time that simply is, not was, not were, not am, no, it's am, yeah, 
B is M R was were been. B is M is the is the time. The helping verbs. There was a time called B. There was a time called is. There was a time called M and R. Which that is a paradox because it was without time. Time is without time and is be being am and are but once you say was were been have has had as soon as you develop a tense that involves a time you have created in your vocabulary the timeline you didn't create it but again if at a funeral you have burned somebody to ashes and you say, you know what, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And yet, this is the end to you. We're back to chaos. If you're talking about a mass extinction and you're talking about it like the earth prior to human existence and evolution and you are talking about it it means that an extinction a mass extinction level event is not the end otherwise you wouldn't be talking about it you wouldn't be thinking about it so in this philosophy of chaos I want you to explain the absence of existence I want you to explain it in perfect detail. Give us evidence of nothing. Can you present evidence of nothing? Can you draw a picture of nothing? Can you conceptualize nothing? Can you prove that nothing exists? It is almost paradoxical to even frame that question correctly. Can you prove that nothing exists? Can you prove your chaos theory actually exists? Do you understand the paradox of that statement, question, quandary? Once you order your thought, once you order your hypothesis, you have already paradoxically, but quite simply, counterproductively, possibly, disintegrated nothing. Nothing does not exist. There is no such thing as nothing. There only is.